Professor Michelle Hamer leads the implementation of two national research infrastructure projects funded by the Department of Science and Technology, namely the Natural Science Collection Facility and the Biodiversity Biobanks SA Facility. She joins us now to explain the purpose of these projects. Michelle, most people have not heard about natural science collections. What are these? Okay, so natural science collections are preserved plants and animals, so things like pressed plants. Um, animal skins, skulls, bones, um, pinned insects, frogs and snakes in um, ethanol to preserve them. And these are very large collections that have been built up over a very large, long period of time and they're kept in safe storage, in, mostly in museums and in herbaria across the country. So we've got about 30 million specimens or objects that represent over 100,000 different species and they've been collected over the last 200 years. So what is the purpose of these collections? Uh, why do we need to keep them? Okay, so this is a, a record of our biodiversity in the country and it's also a historical record because it's been collected over so long. Um, and so it's like a reference collection for identifying um, plants or animals. You can check against the known ones in the collection. Um, and then there also there's, there's data associated with each specimen. So when it was collected, when it was collected, who collected it. And we compile all of those data into big databases that can be analyzed to look at how species spread, or have shrunk in their distribution. Um, so how distribution of species is changing over time. Is there any link between the natural science collection and agriculture? Yeah, so, um, you know, there, there are um, a lot of pest species, insect pests that, can, that need to be identified and we use the collections to, to do that identification. Um, and there's also a lot of beneficial insects and plants that, that we need to be able to accurately identify for, for agriculture. Um, we can also use those data sets to look at how um, pests or parasites have changed, how they've spread, how they've gone up and down over time. Um, and um, I think just, just to understand the diversity in agricultural lands of plants and animals that are there, um, some are beneficial, some are, are harmful for agriculture. So it just really tells us a lot about the, the species that are on the land and, and how they've changed over time. And, and many of those play a very important role for agriculture. And now for the other project, the Biodiversity Biobanks SA. How do biodiversity biobanks differ from natural science collections? Okay, so the, the, the natural science collections are um, dead things. They um been they you know they did, they're not living at all. There's no chance of them ever being um, brought back to life or um, being grown. Whereas the biobanks are um they, they are, a, a lot of that material is, um, they gene banks. And so they store um, materials like seeds. So those can be grown. They tissue cultures of crop plants. So that can be used to grow a full plant. And they, they cultures of microbes, so bacteria, viruses, um, fungi. So they can be put into a, a, a sort of rested state, but they can be resuscitated or regrown at any point. Um, and it's sperm and eggs from, from animals. And then there's also things like blood and hair and feces and um, all tissue samples and extracted DNA that are kept frozen. Um, and so it's, it's different, it's not the whole thing and, and they serve quite a different purpose in some cases. 
Where are these biobanks in South Africa? Okay, so there's a range of different types. Um, there are agricultural biobanks and gene banks and tissue cultures for crops and, and um, livestock and diseases, and those are at the Agricultural Research Council, so they're also scattered across the country, and then there are um, microbial ones at the University of the Western Cape, another one at the University of Free State, there's wildlife disease or wildlife veterinary biobank at Skukuza in the Kruger Park, there's another one at the National Zoo in Victoria, um, there's seed banks um, that fall under the Department of Agriculture and also one that falls under the National Biodiversity Institute. So there's a whole range of different types that are under different institutions and in different places in the country. And how do they contribute to South African agriculture? Okay, so they obviously um, there's some that are very specifically agricultural biobanks, gene banks and, and crop tissue cultures. Um, and <clears throat> there's also all the disease biobanks, so viruses and bacteria that affect um, plants and animals is all the, um, the, the so there's um, material from those diseases. And those are used a lot for research. So research into, into agricultural um, diseases, things that affect livestock or crops. Um, and there's research going into that. There's research going into the crop improvement. So using these gene banks to improve crops, using the gene banks to improve livestock, mm -hmm. um, developing new products, um, biotechnology products, so there's a lot in the um, yeasts and in the fungi or soil improvements um, for fertilizers, the different um, types of fertilizer materials. So there's a lot of um, new development, but then also a lot of assistance to, to help um, with, with disease mm -hmm. identification. In general, I suppose, Funds is quite a challenge. Where do you get funding for these projects? Okay, so, so all of these um, facilities are funded through government, through a, a range of different government departments. Mm -hmm. But the Department of Science and Innovation uh, recognised the need to have some kind of coordination across all of them to share knowledge and expertise and develop standards and protocols and so they've invested parts of, of both projects. So they have, been, have funded the Natural Science Collection Facility and the Biodiversity Biobank South Africa. They don't fund all the, all the operations, but they fund um, a network and they also invest in upgrading the facilities to ensure that they meet global standards um, and also to promote the use of these um, facilities and resources for research and development to benefit the country. Where can we get more information? So both, both the projects do have websites. Um, so if you look at, uh, if you Google nscf.org.za for the Natural Science Collection Facility, there's a lot of information about the collections and why they matter and the work that we're doing. And then the, the the biobanks, it's uh, bbsa.org.za. And um, that is not as much information there. We still, that, that project is still um, really being set up, but, but there's information and it will be added to um, over time. And that was Professor Michelle Hamer. She's the lead of the Natural Science Collection Facility and the Biodiversity Biobanks SA facility.